Hi, I'm David Penn, Research Analyst with Finnovate. Thank you for joining us for our Finnovate West Digital 25 and 5 Rapid Fire Question Series. Uh, joining me today is Robin Turkia, excuse me, of Zeta. Robin, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So before we get started, I thought maybe you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and Zeta. Uh, sure. Um, thanks a lot, David. So I've been a serial tech entrepreneur now for about 25 years, and Zeta is actually my fifth company. I've had the good fortune to sort of be a founder, co-founder, multiple other sort of successful tech companies in the past. And uh, um, Zeta is basically at the forefront of really disrupting technology for financial institutions and banking. So we built um, is a product, a primary product is called Tachyon, uh, which is basically, we call it a Neo stack in some sense. So it's a cloud native um, API ready mobile first banking technology stack, which vertic vertically integrates core processing, uh, mobile, web front ends, uh, fraud management, card management systems, digital channels, marketing, et cetera, all into one platform to enable financial institutes and FIs to actually create like a neo banking legacy banks to sort of replace or parallelly sort of deploy our stack in a pay as you go simplistic model and deliver sort of personalized banking uh, and, and modern banking and modern sort of products at scale. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. I mean, it combines so many things into that one pack, so many different things that we're hearing about banks looking for all in one. It, it, it does. Well, I mean, I think there's a different perspective also, right? Like we started off, me and Ramki, uh, my co-founder, we started off with the perspective of, well, you know, if you wanted to build the, I don't know, Apple or Tesla of banking, like give that kind of experience in, in banking and, and financial services, you know, most FIs today have to, they'll buy like a legacy core running on a mainframe from Pfizer, or they might buy a, you know, a fraud processing system from somebody else, an ACS from somebody else, a mobile app from somebody else, a card management system, somebody else, and you have to integrate all these six, 10, 15 different products to try and build a outstanding modern consumer experience. And it ends up, you know, delaying launches, um, not enough innovation, stuff that's not half big product experiences, et cetera, for customers. And so we thought, well, if you want to really truly build the Apple of banking, if you will, um, you know, you have to build a, a full stack uh, platform, but that uses kind of loosely coupled microservices architecture. It's, you know, fully modular, it's built using modern tech. So, uh, every single component of Tachyon is entirely built by us, entirely built in, you know, um, uh, uh, by our organization. No outsourced components, no uh, external sort of switches, components, et cetera. We built everything and that enables us to really provide a faster launch, quicker, you know, faster and quicker launches, much more innovation and a modern stack that banks can use for their customers. No, very, very interesting. And I want to encourage everyone who's going to be attending Finnovate West Digital to make sure you stop by Zeta's booth to learn a lot more about uh, the work they're doing. Obviously, catch the demo. Uh, this year, we've got a curated booth, so it's going to give you a lot more opportunity to really get down and, and inside and behind the scenes with what's going on with Zeta. So, fantastic. Let's go ahead and get started with our 25 and 5 rapid fire questions. Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. All right, here we go. Question number one Which gets you more excited, artificial intelligence or open banking? Oh, wow. Um, um, I think I'm going to have different answers to this question, depending on whether it's sort of a personal question or a professional question. You know, as it relates to banking, Zeta is at the forefront of the open banking revolution. So Tachyon, our product, uh, is built with open banking in mind. And so, in, 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 you know, while artificial intelligence, I think, will have a significant impact on banking, you know, credit scoring, underwriting, uh, you know, processing, you know, uh, automation, et cetera, I actually think open banking will be a bigger game changer than AI. Uh, within the financial services space, not in, you know, holistically around the world. I think AI is a game changer and I, and I personally am, you know, doe eyed when I think about sort of AlphaGo beating Lisa Dole, uh, mm -hmm. using sort of a deep learning algorithm. But, you know, I strongly believe that open banking would kind of have the same impact on innovation and access to banking as open internet standards like TCP IP and HTTP had on the proliferation of the internet. So in many ways in the financial services space, I, I believe, uh, I believe open banking will have a more near term and a much more significant impact than, than AI would. I guess that's the way I'd probably answer the question. Sure, I hear what you're saying. And I love that analogy with, with the open internet. Uh, your favorite technology company outside of FinTech? Uh, ooh, um, Tesla and Apple, I guess, would be top of the, the list. Certainly, I both respect the, the entrepreneurs uh, and founders behind them. I've grown up kind of reading biographies of Apple and, 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 and also of Tesla more recently. Uh, mm -hmm. And also truly appreciate their sort of consumer-minded focus and, and in terms of building products. Excellent. Uh, next question. Do you use a robo-advisor for your personal investing? Um, <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, so, you know, uh, I've had the, uh, the fortune of sort of having a couple of interesting exits in the past and so built out a capital base. But the, the interesting part is I actually am not really 
into investing. I, I love building stuff. So I'm not a passive investor. So most of my investments are largest, the largest portion of my personal investments are all in my own companies. Mm, so okay. I've invested my personal capital into Zeta, my personal capital into a couple of other companies that I run and operate. Uh, and, and most of the other stuff sits in, in you know, um, low, low risk bonds and, and, and low risk investments. So, so no, the short answer would be no, I, I haven't used a robo advisor uh, okay. for my, my wealth management. All righty, here's an easy one for you. Challenger banking, yay, nay, or yawn? <laughs> um, I'm probably not gonna be very popular with my opinion in this particular, uh, in this particular domain. So I, I, I personally think that challenger banking or neo-banking as it's called in some ways, uh, as a phenomenon is a temporary anomaly, um, owing to a significant gap in modernization of legacy banking tech. So our product, our mm -hmm. goal at Zeta mm -hmm. is to enable legacy banks to provide, their, you know, to me, neo banks and legacy banks are both banks. The only difference is that neo banks have modern technology. And to the extent that legacy banks can bridge that gap, which I anticipate in the next 10 years, most existing stacks will get, you know, revamped and, and, and modified and replaced with modern stacks. Uh, and that's really our goal. Our goal with Tachyon is to enable legacy banks to modernize their experiences. And when all legacy mm -hmm. banks provide a modern experience, then technically every bank is a challenger bank, right? So, <laughs> so there's no, so, so that's my thesis on, on this whole challenger bank. I, I believe that they'll exist. They, they serve an amazing purpose. They're, uh, they're in some ways, I would say the early, you know, any, if you think about the Joffrey Moore sort of crossing the chasm curve, in some ways they are the early adopters. So it's just that <laughs> they're writing their own tech, but they're the early adopters. But pretty much everybody in the banking and the, uh, the FI financial services space will have to replace legacy tech that's been running around, you know, I mean, some banks are still using COBOL of programming languages in, in the 1950s. Right. Um, um, that's definitely not meant for sort of a modern um, experience. So, so yeah, I, I personally think that, and in, in, in many of the kind of legacy banks are kind of creating digital banks within banks. So they're almost creating their own challenger bank to mm -hmm. challenge their mm -hmm. own bank. Um, and so, as, as I said, I think it's a temporary anomaly. Eventually there'll be no challenger banks because every bank will be a, a neo bank or a modern bank basically. Very, very interesting. Uh, how about like this? So Web 2.0, by the way, right now, right? There, there was this whole phenomenon of now there's because everything is Web 2.0. There's no like you, you won't find, you'd be hard pressed to find a website mm -hmm. that's Web 1.0, I guess. Um, so similarly, like I think, you know, I, I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you, but you know, thought an analogy would be, would be interesting. No, it is. And, and I think it's always helpful for people to understand what's, what's, what's going on. Uh, here's another one favorite season of the year. Favorite season of the year? You know, <laughs> I'm in London, which is famous <laughs> for. Um, people complaining about the weather. That's the thing that people do here. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm a recent, you know, um, citizen here in the sense of recent resident of London. Uh, and I actually quite like the season. The fact that there's actually four distinct seasons. I would say favorite would be, it's a toss up between summer and fall. Mm -hmm. Like the fall colors and, and summer in London. It's just beautiful. Uh, I've been there once. It is incredible. Uh, your favorite mode of public transportation? Uh, Uber, always. Uh, I can always get work done in the back of the car. So, you know, I, I, I you know, I... <laughs> Um, I think I'm probably one of the few people in London that, have, that has lived here for three years and has taken the tube once during that time. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, uh, let's see. What gets you more excited, blockchain or the Internet of Things? Um, definitely the Internet of Things. You know, I, I love blockchain for its uh, mathematical elegance. Like, I love the algorithm. Mm. Behind. I'm a techie at heart. Uh, in, so, you know, in, in many ways, blockchain sort of solved a once assumed to be unsolvable problem of decentralization of data with built-in trust. It's just a... It's a uh, it was a phenomenally hard problem to solve, and, and the, the solution is very elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, however elegant the technology and solution is, uh, my personal belief is the applications are limited, and its popularity is blown out of proportion. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, people talking about like, oh, blockchain is going to be bigger than the internet or whatever. Like, I, I think the I think it's it's in many ways blown out of proportion. IoT, on the other hand, will result in you know disruption in how we access devices, the data we can get from them, and will truly change the industry. You know, truly bring about changes in industries from you know, agriculture to healthcare and beyond. So, so certainly IoT. Yeah, good point, good point. Uh, best city for technology startups that nobody knows about? Um, I think tech startups have a way of sort of, you know, becoming known. So I don't necessarily think there's a city that is unknown. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say no one knows about it, but I, I do I love Boston. There's tons oh, of okay. talent in, in Boston, thanks to, you know, MIT, Harvard, lots of students. It's a beautiful city. We have an office there uh, mm. and I've always loved visiting, uh, visiting Boston. So I guess it's not in the, top set that would come to mind, but it certainly is, uh, is not unknown either. Sure, sure. Definitely worth remembering Boston. Uh, you've given us a couple of, of controversial tech opinions. How about one more? What's your most controversial or unpopular tech opinion? All right. Um, here it goes. I think cryptocurrencies are a complete fad. Um, currencies oh. need stability, guarantee, acceptance, and legality. I don't, 
I don't buy, I buy, I buy the fundamental technology of blockchain. I believe that governments could use it for, for their currencies in, in meaningful ways. But, uh, but I, I think cryptocurrencies are bad. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, if you were not involved in fintech, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, if I wasn't involved in fintech, um, well, either, I guess, you know, some sort of venture in education or, hmm. Uh, or spend time in academia. I love advanced physics and biotech. So that, that could okay. be, if I, if I wasn't an entrepreneur, I'd probably, be, I'd probably be studying physics, I guess. Yeah, interesting field to be sure. Uh, let's see, uh, it's time to relax. Do you read a book, listen to music, or catch a podcast? Uh, read a book on okay. my Kindle. That's my typical, that would be my typical go-to. Excellent. Uh, what's the best advice on any topic that you've gotten this year? Best advice on any topic? Uh, you know, maybe let me stretch the, uh, the, the timeline to not necessarily this year. Like, I, I want to bring in this personal perspective, which is my dad um, mm -hmm. growing up would always tell us, me and my younger brother, that um, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. And this is something you drilled into us like day in, day out. You keep telling us you can achieve anything you set your mind to. And it, to, to the extent that as kids, you'd be like, Dad, we know you told us before. <laughs> uh, but it sticks. It sticks with mm. you. Uh, it, it becomes a, a fundamental core belief. And, and it's, uh, it's been instrumental in, in my past successes and ongoing um, journey that I truly do believe that, you know, that, that we can achieve anything we set our mind to. Wow, that's fantastic advice. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, oh, do you own a smartwatch? Uh, no, no, my phone is my smartwatch. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, what's your favorite sport or recreational activity? Uh, well, I used to play squash. I love taking a walk in the Ooh, park. Squash. <laughs> escape rooms, um, I guess would be a, I love like these escape room puzzle solving things. Oh. Now you can't do them anymore during COVID, but I've, I've done a ton of them before. Um, you know, where you, where you get locked in a room for 60 minutes with a bunch of friends and you have to try and solve your way out of it. Those are, those wow. are fun. Wow, that's very interesting. I've only heard of those. Uh, here's another one. Um, do you own more in digital assets, Bitcoin, than you do in precious metals like gold? Uh, neither. I you... own neither Bitcoin nor gold, um, silver, etc. I mean, the only, most of my ownership is, is, is my companies. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what's your favorite vacation spot or getaway? Um, anywhere in the mountains would be amazing. Mm. Um, just skiing or hiking. I think mountains are the best place to feel disconnected. So they've always sort of been time in the mountains. Wow, very, very nice. Uh, which fintech news is more likely to get your attention if you come across it as a headline? A big IPO, a big acquisition, or a big VC funding? Um, more likely to get my attention, you know, potentially uh, big funding, but more likely to get my attention in terms of like, well, I would say um, amongst all of these, like I would say big impact would be bigger for me than any of these. Like me hmm. funding and valuations are more the side effect. And if a company is making meaningful impact, that would certainly get my attention even more. But amongst the ones you spoke about, I guess, maybe a big funding. Okay, uh, sounds good. Um, here's one. Elon Musk needs your help. Would you rather lend your talents to Tesla or SpaceX? I don't know if I'm qualified <laughs> to lend my talents to either. Probably more so with Tesla than SpaceX. I um, but, but Tesla also more for the reason that it solves for more kind of near-term immediate concerns in the world than longer-term concerns. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and I'd love to be able to solve for those problems, you know, around electric cars, climate change, um, if that was, those are the only options, I guess, yeah. Sure, excellent, very interesting. Uh, let's talk a little about Zeta. What's the most unique thing about your company's technology? I mean, I think there's many things unique. So our primary product, Tachyon, is actually the only full stack modern core and processing platform that can power any asset and library product from products of, the, of a FI, FI from soup to nuts. You know, core, processing, the mobile app, the back office, you know, interfaces for your you know, various internal banks, sort departments and teams, et cetera, without reliance on any other third party software. So, um, so it really is the only kind of um, full stack modern, uh, as I said, we call it neo stack, uh, only full stack modern core and processing platform. Uh, and, and that's quite unique. In most cases, you'll typically find um, FI spread their technology across multiple different uh, vendors and don't necessarily get the, the outcome they desire or they deserve. Right, right. Uh, who would you say are your primary customers? So our primary and only customers are FIs that want to offer a neo banking experience to their retail customers or commercial customers for credit products, loan products, DDA, savings, deposits, uh, et cetera. 
Um, so yeah, our primary customers would be banks, credit unions, um, money, you know, lenders, et cetera, that want to basically provide a much more modern uh, neo banking experience to their customers. Excellent. Uh, you described yourself as a serial entrepreneur earlier. What would you say is the most important thing about building a strong team? Um, a strong team. Well, if I think about Zeta, you know, we we started off with six years ago, me and my co-founder with zero knowledge in the financial services space. Uh, and I think it helps in many ways because then we came with no prejudices mm. and first principles thinking. But, you know, along the way, we've also hired amazing people that have like, tw you know, two to three decades of experience in the uh, financial services space. So I think the, I think the, I guess the most important thing about building a strong team for a, um, a technology company in the FI space is, is the right mix of, you know, first principles thinking and modern thinking along with deep domain expertise. So kind of balancing that out with, you know, people from both sides would, would probably lend itself to building a really strong team. Yeah, that's a very interesting answer. Uh, where do you see uh, Zeta in say two to three years from now? Oh, we see ourselves as global category leaders of um, Neostacks for FIs. I mean, we're, we think we're further ahead in comparison to any other player out there, and we see ourselves as, as a global leader in this category. Mm, excellent. Just a couple more. Uh, what's the one technology that you personally can't do without? Uh, do you mean gadget, I guess, or? However you, however you want to define it. Um, my noise canceling Bose headsets. Ah, I've heard that one before. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, let's see. Oh, what are you looking forward to most once the COVID crisis has passed? Um, you know, my life hasn't changed much. I've been a hermit <laughs> in many ways working remotely, but uh, I would say seeing my parents, I typically make it, to, I, I live in London. Uh, I typically end up seeing my parents uh, once every quarter or so. I haven't been able to do that since a while uh, mm -hmm. because of COVID and, you know, lack of being able to travel. So that would be great. Yes, I believe that's a very popular response. Uh, our last question, what is your favorite thing about being a part of Finnovate this year? Uh, you know, this is our first participation in Finnovate. I did a bunch of reading on you guys and, and reviewed sort of what, what you have to offer. And I really love the demos. You know, many mm -hmm. times I find conferences have a plethora of wisdom from industry stalwarts, but they don't offer any platform for showcasing innovation. You know, there's mm -hmm. so many people who are attending who can showcase innovation. And, and, and I love this, you know, section that you have around, we're going to be giving a demo ourselves, but around being able to showcase innovation. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably um, what I'm looking forward to most. Fantastic. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing more of you and Zeta at Finnovate West Digital, the uh, November 23rd through the 25th. Thank you very much for doing part of our 25 and 5 interview series. I hope you enjoyed it. Got a little bit of a, a kick out of sharing some of your thoughts and uh, opinions on some of these topics. It's been really fun getting to know you and Zeta just a little bit more. Fantastic. I certainly enjoyed it too. Thank you, David, for uh, spending time and giving, giving us the opportunity. Absolutely. And thank all of you for joining us, Finnovate West Digital, and thank you for joining us for 25 and 5.